Okay, so today is the 12th of March 2021, and I thought I'd do an update on my music setup. Won't really call it a studio as such, but it's a music room at least. Um, a few people have been wanting me to do this video for a while, um, so I'll try my best. It's going to be probably a lengthy video, probably about half an hour or so. I'll go through every single thing in this room. So if it's not for you, then sorry, but I will be doing some piano uploads soon, hopefully over the weekend. So anyway, I'll start with the lighting. So this is kind of how I like my lighting in the room. This is actually daytime, believe it or not, but it, I like it. Um, yeah, I think lighting is really important to be, for me, especially to be creative and things like that. So, for the purpose of the video, I'll just turn the lights on. A bit more warmer light. Uh, so, alright, I'll start with the flooring. I don't know very much about room acoustics and things like that, to be honest with you. But, the floor is a slate floor. Um, and then I have this rubber matting. Um... Sorry about the shadows of the camera and things like that. This matting um, is like a gym mat type thing. It's quite frail in some ways, um, can easily break off, especially if you're sitting on a chair with wheels on it like that one. Um, so I have a rug as well, but it definitely absorbs a lot of the sound and, and stops um, you know, natural reverb from happening in the room. So, you know, I'm not that fussed about it, to be honest with you. I'm not heavily into it, like, to that point where I'm making, you know, tracks for you uh, for, for iTunes or whatever you want to call it, Apple Music or Spotify and that sort of thing. I don't make my a living out of music, so to me it's just a hobby. Um, so then I'll go back go to this wall, first of all. Um, you can see it's all movies and things like that. And um, it's kind of, I, I've been collecting these movies for... A long time um, ever since blu-ray sort of came about well for me anyway it came about in about 2006 or 2007 is when I've sort of um, discovered it I guess most of these videos I have purchased when I've been overseas on holidays United States UK Canada things like that um, and believe it or not there's probably about 70% of the videos here that I've never seen I'm one of those stupid people who like watching the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, one of them being The Breakfast Club is probably my favourite movie ever. So that's the Snowy Breakfast Club. So anyway, good thing about this wall is the reason why I'm mentioning it, apart from being in the room, is it's really, really good. It has a bit of a sound trap because, um, you know, if I was to clap my hands, which I can't because I've got my hands full, um, you, I don't get any sort of real troubling reverb sort of sound that sort of helps. If I didn't have anything on this wall, which I know what that's like, then it would be very different. So that's that wall. Anyway, starting with the guitars, um, you know, look, I'm not a guitarist, definitely not. I know basics and things like that. I was better when I was in high school. I was a lot better at the guitar, but piano and, and keyboards and things has always been my thing. The red one there is just a really cheap Fender Squire um, electric guitar. Then behind that is a um, a Bronco bass, a Squire guitar, uh, bass guitar. And then behind that's a Fender semi-acoustic guitar. So, you know, um, I like them, they're really nice. I think I've, one YouTube video I've had this guitar in it, um, the acoustic, I think it was Strange Kind of Love by Peter Murphy, I think it is. And um, Into the Night by, Benny Mard Mardinez or Mard Madones, I don't know how you say his last name. Someone will probably correct me there, but you know that's not what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, I've you know I actually want to buy a um, a new Fender Strat or a Fender Strat, should I say? Um, but our local music shop is a little bit, you know, if they don't have it, they'll try and sell you something else, and it's awkward because it's not what I want to buy and. I got all these excuses, I suppose, last time I was there about, you know, it's going to be months and months and months before they get stock from the United States or wherever, Mexico or something, um, because of uh, COVID. Uh, in all fairness, that was probably June last year or maybe July, so I just put it on hold and I thought, ah, oh, no, I'm not, not in a hurry for it, so 
Anyway, so we go to here now. Got the Prophet 6 by Sequential. Um, I'll start with that one. So, and actually this is going to chop and change a little bit. I'll talk about all three. The Prophet 6, um, the Jupiter X, and the OB6 also by Sequential. So, I absolutely love the Prophet 5 and, um, you know, to be honest with you, I can't justify spending ten to fifteen thousand dollars Australian for a good, um, good condition Profit Five second hand, obviously because they don't, you know, it's an old synth. Um, so the Profit Six was the next best thing that I could have, even though it's not exactly the same as a Profit Five. Still an analog synth, but you know, and it has the, some beautiful sounds that you know it sounds exactly, um, exactly like it. For example. Or. Anyway, I don't know, you need two hands. Um, just that's just that's just on the first preset that I've got installed on there, so some sort of brass thing. Um, I love it. I haven't had much time to play with it, um, but absolutely love it. Jupiter X um, is the next thing. So what actually happened uh, was I wanted both, but I missed the first run of the Jupiter X's because there was just so many only limited numbers, and there was none in the country, and because of COVID nineteen, and I couldn't get one, and Profit 6 I bought instead as a bit of a reward to myself because I'd been doing heaps of overtime and um, through COVID I was very lucky to keep my job and you know so it sort of kept me sane with something that I could have plus I had a holiday booked last year to go to the United States but because of the virus borders were closed couldn't travel and so I had extra money um, that I could free up from that when I got my refunds through so um, I decided I'd buy the profit and I got got it around the wrong way. I should have really ordered the Jupiter at that point because I could have, but as I said, there was no stock in the end, so I settled with the profit six. Um, Jupiter X is, um, I found a music shop in Perth on the other side of the country who, they didn't have a stock, but they were happy to let me pay for it and order one, I suppose, or when they come in stock, I'll be getting one. Um, so I got really impatient after a couple of months of waiting and I even contacted Roland to find out what the goal is and they said that um, there was delays in there in shipping containers in Malaysia or something like that. So I got impatient and I had wanted the OB6 module instead. So what happened was I paid an extra couple of hundred dollars to get the OB6 uh, module and um, when that arrived in stock in Perth, they rang me and told me, oh, it's in stock, and guess what? We're just about to ship it, and we got some Jupiter Rexes in stock today, and one of them, um, a customer has cancelled their order, and they don't want it anymore. Do you want it? And, of course, I had already been waiting so long, so I thought, yes, yes, yes. So I purchased both, and they shipped them. So I got both at the same time. A little bit expensive time for me to, because <laughs> I only got the Profit 6 in May, and then I think it was, I don't know, June or July or August, maybe August actually. I think August I got my OB6 and the Profits uh, and the Jupiter X. Jupiter X is an interesting one. There's heaps of reviews online about them. Um, they feature, I guess, um, different models. So Jupiter X is, or the Jupiter based on the Jupiter 8 that came out in 1981. The Juno 106, which was around 1984, I think, from memory. The JX8P, I think, I don't know what year that was, I think it might have been 1985-ish maybe, um, or 84 around the same time, I can't remember, SH101 I think, XV5080 which is a rack um, Roland unit, and the RD series piano stuff from Roland as well. So I really only wanted it for the Jupiter stuff and possibly the Juno stuff. Um, and that's about it. So the, the other stuff is a bonus and you can download, um, well, I should say purchase and download additions for from Roland Cloud um, into this and um, it's, it's just amazing. Um, so 
I'll just um, show you a quick sound. For example, um, uh, what have we got here? So we've got some really nice brass sounds. Really nice. I mean, it's just one sound. I mean, there's heaps. I don't know. It's hard to play one-handed, but it's just awesome. So I've got all those things now. Um, the OB6, I wanted that because, similar to the Prophet, I wanted the o Oberheim kind of sounding synth. Um, uh, you know, some of the songs, so I can't even think of them, but Stand Back by Stevie Nicks, they used a OB6, I mean, an OBXA, um, to do the main sort of synth riff on that, and I think they maybe used a Jupiter bass kind of arpeggiated thing happening from, from my research, so, you know, I've got both of those things now, or at least something similar that will get that sound that I want. Uh, Come Back and Stay by Paul Young, they used an OBXA as well. Don't You Forget About Me, My Simple Minds, my all-time favourite song. Um, that was done on OBXA. Now this isn't an OBXA of course, but having an Oberheim filter and things like that and um, you can craft sounds a certain way and definitely a lot cheaper for me than buying or hunting around for a second hand OBXA or OB8 um, by Oberheim. Um, so, and yes, I do know that they're um, Behringer or Behringer, however you pronounce it, um, are just about to release an OBXA model. Um, you know, I likely may buy it, I don't know, but um, probably seems a bit foolish if I've got this, but depends, I suppose. So that's those. It was a bit of a long rant, sorry, but moving on to this stuff. Um, I've got um, these uh, Roland Boutique modules. I've only got three. It's quite a few you can get. You can get drum machines, um, TR808 and 909, um, and you know, JX3P or JX3, whatever it is. Um, and other ones, um, you know, in the collection. These the ones I was interested in, the first one I got was this one here, the JP8, which is, again, the like a Jupiter 8 in the box. Um, and uh, what appealed me to the Jupiter 8 is, um, you know, the early 80s kind of sounding stuff, Eurythmics and um, Giorgio Moroder, who's one of my heroes in music, all the soundtrack stuff for Never Ending Story and Electric Dreams and things like that. The Jupiter 8 was used heavily um, on those sorts of soundtracks, so I think that I could have something so cheap in a box that sort of had the same sort of sounds, I guess, was my appeal. But to this day, I still haven't really utilised it, and I've had it for about two years now, I think. Um, so I haven't really done very much with it, which is unfortunate. Um, then I've got the Juno, or JU06A, um, which is two synths in one. It's uh, Juno 60 and the Juno 106. Now, the Juno 60 is probably one of my all-time favourites um, from Roland, to be honest with you. Um, again, heavily used by the Eurythmics, Chris Rhea, um, Enya, um, used to on Storms in Africa. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just an amazing sound, um, you know. And look, I could probably get a second-hand Juno 60 that's reasonable condition. They're not that hard to find, but... I don't know, space is another issue that I've got, so this will do for now. Um, and I have plugins and things like that that do the job for what I want to do. Um, then you've got, and I've got the D05. So um, this is um, basically a, a, a D50 in a box, I guess. Uh, D50 came out in, I think, 1987, and Artists like uh, Phil Collins, um, Carly Simon, George Michael, Enya used it on Ironico Flow. Um, yeah, it's just um, a very unique sounding instrument. I've always wanted a D50. Um, I've heard mixed reviews on them that they're overrated and everything like that. And these things, this is the wonderful thing about life. It's subject to opinion, I suppose. Everything, everyone's got an opinion, so. You know, I like to make my own decision, but you know, this suited me well for a couple hundred dollars. Well, Australian dollars, I think this cost me about 400 and something. 
I got and now I think these are discontinued so I'm glad I got them when I did and look one day I'll probably buy an actual D50 I don't know probably not worth it if I've got this and I've got Roland Cloud as well so um, both are very good versions um, then we've got my speakers which I spoke about in my last room update uh, Yamaha HS8s left and right and I've also got the subwoofer part as well which is under the desk um, I like to turn the subwoofer down mostly because the piano and lower deep sounding is really can muddy things up and confuse things if I'm you know trying to mix music together and all that sort of stuff so I tend to avoid that um, then next part is this desk I guess and the rack itself so the desk I built all by myself now what I mean by that makes it sound like I'm trying to be a bit of a hero here but I have no carpentry skills whatsoever and honestly um, it was probably easier than I thought, but it was the thought of spending all the money on the materials to fail is where I probably had the issue. And I didn't want to, I'm not a fan of power tools, I don't know, I'm not, I don't know how to use a circular saw. Pretty embarrassing really, but that's the truth, I don't know how to do all these things. So um, I cheated and had a jigsaw and, and even to the point where I purposely bought materials that were at certain lengths to sort of avoid having to cut wood and it actually worked out in my favor and the reason why i didn't buy a desk is because i've i've looked high and low for a desk that would suit my needs and what i mean by that is i didn't want all racky up on top of the desk with the imac at the time sitting high up in the sky um like you see these desks that are like a really short the keyboard drawers are really designed i guess for lighter keyboard without weighted keys and with um i mean you know that will support i need something that will support really heavy keyboards this this nord stage that i've got is around 18 to 20 something kilos i think so you know and then you've got the pressure i mean i'm quite heavy handed at playing um believe it or not so you know last thing i want is that crumb crashing down on my feet because it will really hurt <laughs> um so anyway so that's why i built my own desk because i just got fed up with um trying to find something and believe it or not I think the materials cost me maybe 500 bucks around that point um, whereas if I was to buy something like this discounting my poor craftsmanship it probably cost a lot more than that I guess um, but anyways and look to be honest with you I, I actually am a little bit more sentimentally attached to it because I remember me building myself when you build something it, it sort of um, has a little bit more value to yourself that's my opinion anyway because i know that i don't have those skills and i managed to pull it off <laughs> i don't know how and the other requirement i had was this rack i wanted a rack system that like that i guess ended up being part of the supports for the table um with racking and that sort of stuff and that was probably one of the most trickiest parts is making sure i got that the right width and um you know so things aren't warped and whatever i mean I, that's not my only support i've got support at the back that runs along you know um, to keep everything square and whatnot. Um, so anyways, this top rack here is actually um, my audio interface by Focusrite. So it's a Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 um, Gen 3. Um, and then below that I have a, a Behringer or Behringer, however you want to pronounce it, um, mixer rack thing. So the purpose, purpose of buying um, I guess the mixer rack part is because the audio interface above only has a certain amount of inputs. The, there's two on the front, um, so it has eight inputs basically. Um, two on the front I use for guitar or bass or microphone or whatever, I don't really use a microphone but that's what the front two are from, which only leaves six on the back. And so you, if you could take into consideration a left and right channel, that's only really three devices so I have left and right like the so one and two is the guitar on the front three and four at the back is my Nord stage which I mainly use five and six is the Prophet 6 and seven and eight is any audio that comes from the um, the Behringer mixer below and what's connected to that that has I don't know how many channels now 16 inputs um, so I think 16 so that means eight devices so I have my boutiques, I have the OB6 and the Jupiter X, and also the MODX on the other side of the room connected to that. Because the truth be told, I don't record everything all at once like a band would. So I just want to have everything connected so when it's time for me to record something, I can turn it on and then arm the track and then get going with it. I don't want to be plugging things in and looking for cables and that sort of stuff. So that really is an amazing 
thing that that Behringer um, rack thing. Um, I don't know what the model number is to be honest with you. It's a Euro rack, um, something or other. Euro rack Pro. So I'll try to remember to put the links in the description for this sort of stuff. I mean, if anyone's interested. Um, then below that, I have a disused Motu MIDI interface thing. The reason why I bought that, it's not connected at the moment for two reasons. Number one, I don't have anything to plug into it. I bought it because in this rack, I'm going to be collecting older sound modules that don't have USB connectivity. So this will give me an interface to be able to connect the MIDI devices into. So some of the things I might get is like a TX802. I might get, um, you know, a Roland JD990, um, you know, some EMU system stuff. You know, I have a list of things that I do want to get, but I'm quite particular and I want it to be in good condition and finding good things in condition here in Australia is hard. I'd have to pretty much shop around in Japan or um, USA or Europe or something like that. That seems to be where all the better quality stuff is. There just seems to be nothing left here in Australia at the moment. So and that could be because of COVID too. People have been spending up with the stimulus money and things like that. Um, so the other reason why I don't use the Motu thing is because Motu as a company are really, really slow at bringing out drivers for things that you know, um, I remember when Catalina came out, it took a long time for the driver to come out for that. Now that I'm using Big Sur, um, they still haven't released a, a driver. And the other thing that irritates me is they just don't bother updating. Like, I mean, the last update was November, according to their website. It's now March, and their website says keep checking here, and I've been checking there, and there's nothing. So, um, yeah, that, that irritates me. So, anyway. Um, they've probably got better things to do, I'm sure. So then I've got some spare SSDs there. You can't really see it's dark in there. Some lightning cables and things, just various things at my fingertips that I need. And I've got this CS3 uh, compressor sustainer for my guitar. I was, um, Chris Rare uses um, one of these. I mean, I'm sure many artists do, but um, there's a couple of songs I want to do of his that um, I want to try to do on my guitar, but um, I need one of these pedals. And when I was over in San Jose, in 2019 um, at the end of one of my holidays I saw it in Guitar World and it was on special and I thought oh I might just grab that while I'm here and bring it home with me and so it's sentimental in some ways because I bought it overseas and it's, you know um, yeah I know it's stupid I think about stupid things like that that's how that's how I operate um, now there's a pillow there if I'm wondering why it's a pillow here it's got Pennywise a clown on the other side of it um, the reason why I turn it around the other way so it doesn't scare me but um, I use the pillow when I'm laying under the table connecting things or doing things if I have to adjust things um, because there's a piece of wood that lies across there as part of the frame of this desk and it really hurts in the back um, in your back and I've got some guitar cables down there as well which might be hard to see so I kind of just keep that pillow there as a um, for me to use I've got these headphones um, these are um, Biodynamic and their DT990 Pros 250 ohm. Um, look, I tried to research headphones as best as I could. I know still nothing about them, but I'm very happy with these headphones, is all I can say. They're open back ones, um, and um, I use it mainly whenever I'm doing any music stuff, whether it's on the Nord or whatever, I mainly use the headphones um, because then it cuts out distraction elsewhere. I don't annoy people and we have a very noisy dog that barks next door um, to the point where we've even been to court over it and it's just like yeah, any sort of bang that even that noise there the dog will hear it from inside and will come out and bark so um, i'll be very surprised if i get through this video and you don't hear it barking so that's another reason why i struggle with doing videos because you can still hear the dog barking when i'm wearing the headphones so anyway so um i'll get to the nord stage in a minute just quickly on the top, um, my new computer, I've been using iMacs for years and I've got very impatient. Uh, I know they're going to be releasing um, an iMac probably this year or whatever with the new M1 chip, but I decided that um, I would try something different and I got this one. So this is still a Mac, it's a Mac Mini, brand new one with an M1 chip. It's the fully spec'd out Mac Mini. Um, I don't know if you can see it. And there, there it is there. Um, so this is the 16 gigabyte, two terabyte, um, eight core GPU, I think you'd call it. I'm not as good with it anymore. Um, and it's absolutely amazing. Um, 
I absolutely love it. It's so quick. Um, the only thing that I'll complain about, like everyone else, is the lack of upgradability. So that's why I went out and bought the two terabyte one, which cost me an arm and a leg, and um, the lack of the the ports on the back. But I've still managed to get by using um, Thunderbolt port, um, Thunderbolt hubs and things like that. Also have the um, Space Gray keyboard and mouse, which I bought additional because they don't come with the Mac Minis just come on their own. Um, then moving over here, I've got this shelf thing that I kind of built that goes from this bookcase thing. Um, so that just holds up my speaker, my Airport Extreme um, or Airport Express, whatever it's called, which is a, like a Wi-Fi router. Uh, not like a modem, but just a router, a Wi-Fi router. And I've had it for years and it's absolutely amazing. It's a shame that Apple don't um, have them anymore. Um, then I've got my OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock, um, which has a whole heap of USB ports on the back and things like that, and also a daisy chains off there to a Thunderbolt drive I've got over to my right, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and pretty much my Prophet, the OV, um, OV6, the Jupiter, and the CD-ROM here, a Bluetooth, a Blu-ray, sorry, a Blu-ray drive here connects to that, um, and then I think the monitor or something like that connects to it as well, I can't remember. Um, and then over here, I've got, this is like a, a clusterfuck, sorry about the swearing, but that's what it is. Um, call, look at this, Carl Digit Thunderbolt 3 dock, that plugs in the second Thunderbolt um, dock. Um, sorry, second Thunderbolt port, should I say. Um, then I've got this drive here. This is my, this is only a USB 3.1 Gen 1 or Gen 2, I can't remember. I know there's a big difference, but um, this is an 8 terabyte SSD RAID, which has all my native instruments stuff on it. Um, Roland Cloud, all of those old, well not old, but the Concerto libraries. Um, it has all of my tune track libraries for Superior Drummer 3 and Superior Drummer 2. Um, a whole, all my IK, IK multimedia stuff, so Sample Tank 4 Max and um, yeah, all those sorts of um, Syntronic and all those sorts of heavy size sort of stuff. Um, there's other stuff on that drive too, I think like Apple Music Library, I think is pretty heavy, it's like 300 gig. Um, I hoard things and I've been doing it for years, so but at least I'm honest about it, I suppose. Um, then there's this one over here. This is a 16 terabyte SSD RAID. Um, so it's two RAID volumes at eight, gig, eight terabyte each. So there's two four terabyte drives um, in each volume. So yeah, there's four four terabyte drives in here. Um, one of them's a data drive that I store like installers and things like that. Um, and uh, my photos library. So. I like doing photography and things like that, especially when I'm traveling. So, um, and shooting in RAW takes up a lot of space. So, um, I've got years worth of traveling photos and things like that, all cataloged. I'm really particular about data management and things like that. So that's all on that drive. Um, and then that gray one, the Lacey drive on the right is pretty much the master backup. I think it's like 20 terabytes or something like that. Um, it's not SSD though. It's just the um, standard 7200 RPM drives to back up everything so uh, back up back up back up and then the top of that there's just that's just a um a dock um a dock to sort of put external drives in and things like that so you can um get the data off it without having to put it into like an enclosure so it's just like a dock then i've got my uh, gopro charger my um, charger for my Canon SL, DSLR 6D camera. Random film drive just sitting there. Other bits and pieces. My Apple Watch. I don't know why I'm not even wearing that at the moment. Um, then these drawers here. I'll just try and see if I can do it. I've got drawers. I don't know if you can see. Below. Um, and in there I have things like guitar strings. Um, little handy, like just knick-knacky things. Um, Torx screwdrivers for opening up my MacBook Pro things like that, um, little rubber things in there, I don't know what's in this bottom drawer, Hopefully nothing that will embarrass me, but uh, GoPro bits and pieces, that's my old GoPro, um, old one is, I don't know what all that one is, 
I think it might be Bokoro 5 or 7 or something. Um, so there's that. Lamp, obviously. Oh my god, this is taking me forever. Um, then uh, this is the obviously the Nord stage, which I'll be replacing very soon. Um, because it is broken, um, it works and it does its job, but the USB port on it is fried. Um, so I had it connected to a powered USB hub and either the hub failed or whatever and it's burnt out the USB port on the back of this. So I'm having to use um, the old school USB, uh, sorry, the old school MIDI cables at the moment um, because yes, USB port won't work and I heavily rely on a MIDI connection. Just I use software libraries and things like that so that's why. And obviously if I want to play, say for example, the OB6, I'm going to need a MIDI connection to me, for me to be able to control that. Um, but the biggest problem that I've got is the fact I can't update the firmware in this Nord because it requires a USB connection, not MIDI. And I can't download new piano libraries um, or new sounds from their website. And without ranting on too long, I did try to contact Nord, um, who are in Sweden or Switzerland or somewhere, and um, they didn't reply. I've tried many times to contact their support team and no response and um, all I wanted to know was how do I go about getting it repaired and things like that especially here in Australia so I um, contacted local repairers here where I live and there's limited numbers and pretty much they all get back to me and say that Nord won't provide parts to people anymore for the Nord stage 2 um, and that I have to I have no choice but to send it to Sweden Switzerland the whole keyboard um, and I'm not prepared to do that because you're looking at at least six hundred dollars, um, according to the repairers, for them to at least get it and sort it out and send it back and everything like that. And even then, there might there'll probably likely be more labour charges on top of that for all the work. So it's just not financially viable for me. I'd rather replace it, to be honest with you. Um, bit pissed off about it because I think that their customer service stinks. And this is my second Nord now. I've had a Nord piano. Um, and then the, this now Nord stage and I absolutely love them um, and likely stupid me will probably buy another one um, but if not um, and I probably won't get a Nord stage 3 or anything like that this time I'll probably just get the Nord piano because the honest truth is I don't even use the synth technology on this it's underused um, you know I only use the piano component to be honest and to be honest I don't even use that these days I use Keyscape which is a piano library and I just and I just want it for the the, the this feels amazing to play um, so that's why you see all the the big artists and you know um, use them especially in concerts and things like that they're just amazing um, so I'll, I'll probably get either a Nord Piano 4 or whatever comes out next um, or a um, a new Yamaha CP kind of piano that fits under this desk because I bought something to replace this and it was a big fail and I'll tell you that about that in a second lastly I'll just mention these little things here um, this is a plumbing pipe a PVC plumbing pipe that is bracketed underneath the desk um, I have one on either side and it's basically and it's covered in electrician's tape which is really tatted I have to kind of rip that off and just fix it up I, I don't like it. it looks tatty at the moment but um, that I built my own stand to be able to hold the GoPro um, on the on the um, above the, the piano so I can film and it's been one of the best inventions I've ever done I'll show you that shortly I'll get the stand out and show you how it works um, so then I have this this is probably my only regret buying this Yamaha MODX 8 so it's the 88 key version rarely used it I bought it in January last year and I don't think I've even played one full song on it um, I bought it for two reasons because one I was frustrated because I broke this one um, and I thought right I'll piss the Nord one off and I'll buy something else and although this is a little bit thicker um, in height and whatever um, I thought that I could just lower the tra the tape the the keyboard um, tray down and accommodate it and sure enough I did that and it worked but I didn't have enough clearance under my legs and it, you need to be able I need to be able to sit at this computer and do other things. I don't just do music here, I do um, photography stuff and 
um, you know, video editing and things like that. So it needs to be a multi-purpose desk, not just a mu music desk. So that was my problem is not getting the clearance. I didn't want to raise the height of the desk up anymore. I'm happy with the height for my arms to be like everything. I tried really hard to make sure that it was it suited my needs. So what I love about this is the, um, that's not going to play it, the DX side of sounds. And it accepts um, DX7 SysX files. Um, you know, there's some sort of variations as well anyway that, that, that it accepts. Um, it can be quite fussy with what, what SysX files. I mean, I normally use Native Instruments FM8 to import my SysX files and play the DX7 files from way back in the day. Um, but um, I was looking for something to replace this and this was kind of a cheaper price range. I'm not as satisfied as, I mean the keypad is nice, it's okay and I, I could live with it but it's not as good as the Nord and I'm assuming the CP version, the digital piano versions of this is way better anyway than the MODX and probably similar to the Nord stage. So. Um, I'll have to find a music store that sells them and test it out before I buy because I have a problem with buying things online But then again, there's limited options where I live um, 100 and, what, 150 something kilometers from Sydney or 140 kilometers from Sydney um, And even then you go to Sydney and you they all specialize in guitars and drums and everything but keyboards and stuff so anyway, so lastly I have just I built this thing <laughs> Um, so it's pretty much just a bookshelf, a tall bookshelf that I've laid down ways and I've put legs on it. Um, so I can access the sustain pedal down there for my MODX. I put this sheet of wood on here that matches my desk. It's the same material uh, to make it a bit wider to accommodate the back of the, the keyboard. So I've got the, like, the cables and things like that. And it's good for storage. I hate clutter. So like I like to have clean surfaces and things like that. So in here, this is where I store all my music books I've collected over the years in these two drawers. Um, this one here in particular is all artist specific. So I've got Jackson Brown, Cannon Crows, Phil Collins, Crowded House, John Denver, Eagles. Um, that might be the Eagles as well. Eagles, John Farnham, Genesis, Billy Joel, Billy Joel, Elton John, Nirvana, Paul, Paul Kelly, Pearl Jam, Chris Rea, Silver Chair, Neil Ballroom, Silver Chair Diorama, Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy, and Infinite Sadness, Smashing Pumpkins Adore, Dire Straits, Money for Nothing, Dire Straits, Brothers in Arms, Super Tramp, Greatest Hits, U2, and then this one, this is a big folder full of printed sheet music stuff I've collected over the years, like you name it, it's in there. Um, I've had stuff in there for years, and although people ask me, do I have sheet music? Um, because I, the reason why I always answer no, I don't have the sheet music is because most people don't understand that um, I don't have sheet music for what they're listening to me play. Like, it's different. Um, this is, yes, maybe sheet music I might have here where I've covered something, but it doesn't match what they hear in the videos because I do my own kind of learning by ear kind of stuff on top of that. And these are just compilation books in here. Um, this one, Australian, Australian Decade 80s. Decade of the, decade by decade to the year 2000s, the 1990s, number one hits of the 1980s, and the number one hits of the 1970s. So that gives you a range of the things I play. This book here I've had for many years. It's um, it's called The Rose, 50 Soft Rock Classics, and 24.95 it cost whenever that was. I wonder if there's a date in here. Um, Sometimes there's a date, but you got to be careful. It's not the copyright for the song date. But some really good songs in here. Um, Take it to the limit by the Eagles. Better not mention them words because it'll probably get blocked this video because that's what the Eagles are like. Another Eagles song, The Best of My Love. Danny song, Piano in the Dark. After the Gold Rush, Neil Young, I think. Yep, Neil Young. The Rose by, well, Bette Midler, I suppose. Yeah, the lyric, yeah, it's, but it's, she didn't write it. Didn't know that. There you go. So, that's that. I'll just put that there for now. Oh, and also, one of these things I've got, this um, is a Veal Tone, which came out in about, 19, oh, I think, 1981, I'd like to say. I don't know, I might be wrong. Uh, my nan got this in the markets in the 80s for $25. The moron who sold it wrote $25 on the, the front of it, so it pretty much ruined the case. But anyways, 
it's pretty funny in some ways <laughs> um you know at least i know what she paid for it um and it was probably my first ever exposure to touching or playing anything with kids with this little I it have its pouch real time comes with a little book that's scratched up and um it's probably me i did that when i was a kid i'd say at her house and um yeah it's a very unique sounding thing it's um monophonic from memory yeah and you just press the um the keys and it makes some interesting sounds very um i think it's been used actually in modern songs um and it's very recognizable if you hear it on i don't have any batteries in it at the moment i should have been better prepared and i could have shown you but um when she when my nan died in 2013 when we were cleaning out her house i found it and i claimed it because um i'm the only grandchild who really did anything with music i suppose everyone loved music but i was the only one who you know wanted to play and this has sentimental value because she used to give it to me to to play with when i was up there at her house so i'll always have that i never will never part with that not that worth that much in money anyway these days you can buy them fairly cheap second hand um yeah so i've already done that drawer this drawer here this has all my camera gear in it as i said i like doing photography so i've got a 100 400 mil lens there that i do my aviation photography with which i haven't done for a while because of the whole virus thing and to be honest with you i live pretty far from sydney well not pretty far but not not worth it for me going to sydney for the day to do that at the moment some other gopro accessories in there all my cleaning gear I like everything to be very clean, apart from this drawer, of course. Lots of microfiber towels, brand new. Isopropyl alcohol is my best friend for cleaning. Um, other stuff, dust, um, can like dust air spray thing, twist ties and things. I'm really pedantic. Everything's got to be perfect. Then in here, if you can see, it's pretty much just my collection of hats and things like that that I've collected from pretty much mostly from the United States. Um, and here in Australia, so um, some of these are extremely sentimental. My favourite hat is this one. Um, I got this in 2015 from Santa Cruz in California. This one here I got on my last trip from Idaho. Um, Twin Falls in Idaho, actually. So um, there was a shopping magic mall i think it is or something like that and i bought that in there so i don't know just these things i i do are silly sometimes i think and um so anyway that's pretty much it i think i'll just set up this stand and show you my music stand that i use for filming overhead that's my subwoofer you can hardly see i'm sorry but it's there my sustain pedal for my nord i like to have out because when you pull out this drawer here you can see there's not it's, look at the clearance I've got it's nearly nearly flush um, so but that's how I like to have my setup um, and I have another pedal over here an expression pedal which is used for um, I use this for a piece of software I've got on my computer um, called it's an audio modeling thing for a saxophone so if you put your foot on it, um, it's, uh, you know, makes the notes louder and things like that. So, um, yeah, so that's that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say, really. And this cupboard under here just has um, various tools and things like that that I need and I'm too lazy to go downstairs and get from the garage. So, um there's like a flashlight in there, there's a measuring tape, there's spare light globes, there's drill bits and things and double sided tape and screws and drill bits and things that I want handy up here so I don't have to go and get it. Because believe me, I'm always making changes in here. Um, so, yeah, that's that's about it. And that was a bit of a long-winded um, long video and... But, that's what people wanted apparently so and i am planning on doing more videos um more piano cover videos i know it's been a long time but like i said before there's been various reasons uh, my workload at work is extreme at the moment i've had various promotions throughout the last 12 months which is great for me of course but you know it always comes with a price tag and that at the moment is spare time 
Um, and we've, like I said, I've had issues with our neighbour next door and her dog barking. It's out of control. She can't control it. We've already been to court over it. So, um, you know, it's really, really hard. You don't hear it much throughout the day, but at five o'clock in the afternoon, that's when it starts. And uh, it's really, really frustrating because that's around the time I normally get home and that's when the time I've got to be creative and you know by the time I set up everything and you press one note and the dog goes off you think oh my god even with the headphones on and it's really really um, difficult the other thing I'll mention is I have these um, deck savers which um, I use to protect the Prophet and the OB6 I'm just hoping I'll make one for um, the um, Jupiter X because it protects them from dust um, they're absolutely amazing um, I'll see if I can just quickly put this on and you'll see what I'm talking about. Oops. Okay, so that's on. And it's a mate, it fits perfectly. They're designed for this particular instrument. So, and then there's a little one for the OV6. Goes on. Like that. So they're deck savers, and you can get them for the boutiques as well, but I don't know if it's really worth it for $50 each, because that's what they cost you. Um, and yeah, and now I'll just quickly put the camera down for two seconds, and I'll show you the camera rig. Okay, so this is the camera thing. Plugs into there, and again, it's just PVC piping, and the reason why I've done it black is because it looked horrible white. And I had some of these, heaps of these GoPro stickers <laughs> hanging around, so I thought I'll stick them on too and make it look pretty. Um, there's a get bit of a sag in the middle at the moment, but I can easily fix that. That's the, um, the flexible arm thing, the grip arm that I can mount the camera on. So when I mount the camera, it sort of sits there roughly and I can erase the height of it. It has to go up a little bit to be honest with you. So I think I've got it around the wrong way, but you get the point. So that gives me um, a really good top down and I actually can get the whole keyboard in view if I rotate this so it's not bending downwards. If, I'm bend if it's bending upwards, um, then it'll likely work do something like that um, yeah and then I can just adjust if it's a little bit out of um, I can transform it so um, yeah so that's it that's my GoPro rig and you can I can just leave it there it doesn't shake or anything like that because it's attached to the desk not to the keyboard drawer um, so I can really bang on the keyboard and it doesn't move everything else moves but that so that's great so and I'm just gonna come up with a solution for these ones here so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that one maybe it could make something similar that goes over the back and onto the floor as a stand um, but I, I wasn't going to pay, I didn't want to get a microphone stand, I didn't want to get, you know, um, things hanging from the roof, and I didn't, like, as a microphone stand, and things like, you go, it's on the floor, and then you turn your chair, and you walk into it, and it bumps, and you can't get the same angle again, and so that's why I did the things that I've done now, so, anyway, that's it, I hope you liked the video, um, I'll be doing some more piano covers shortly, I'll be doing some this weekend, hopefully, and if I'm happy with them, they'll be on YouTube, so, um, yeah, so that's about it really. Now the place is a mess. Now I have to clean it back up again. <laughs> so anyway, that's it for now.